little jobs. Uh, and, you know, these are home-based. But the second thing is, they are not your first-tier customer care jobs. These are your second-tier customer care jobs. So they pay more than minimum wage, and they also have a full benefits package that goes along with that. And the company supplies the equipment back to the employee. So I think that's also important to know that it's not just that first level um, customer care job um, that they bring to the community. Um, existing industry coordinator position. Um, and this is something that we've talked about. We actually put this in the budget to um, actually hire this individual by October or November. And the role of this individual would be to work with our existing industries to strengthen the information that we already have and work very closely with Allen as it relates to our existing industry projects and to learn about the community and to start working with some of those projects as well. So we would um, like to go ahead and pos um, post that position and start interviewing by November. Has that job description been vetted through a board? Um, I have a job description, and I think I've showed it to Tom. No. Tom and I have talked about it. He's looked at it. Um, yep. Staff has looked at it. And um, the, like I said, the, we had thought about an assistant project manager, but existing industry coordinator, I think, is really what we want to go for right now. So we'll put, um, Megan has a posting that'll be ready and we'll send that over to Valax to Daily Times and get it on various different websites. So see that out. Um, Megan talked a little bit about the marketing report. We have a conference call with Kate McEnroe tomorrow to just go through some final feedback that she has for us to continue to make moving forward. Um, to highlight on uh, business development opportunities and what we've been doing there, I'll talk first about the Break Promise Partnership. Megan talked about that a little bit. But when you think about the Great Promise Partnership, I think our tendency to think is, or we tend to think that it has to be manufacturing or logistics, it does not. It can be somebody in your office. It could be a high school student that's coming to answer phones. It could be, you know, somebody at Georgia Gulf Sulphur. Um, we've even thought about possibly taking one for just a couple of hours, a student for just a couple of hours, um, <coughs> to help mentor them and get them through, you know, showing them what they can do in the workplace and to help um, get those soft skills that they need to go to work in the future. And while I talk about that, I'll talk about what we talked about at GEDA Board Retreat. So we've had, um, we're very fortunate to have Jeff Russett. He's with Deloitte come and talk to the board, GEDA Board. And what he talked to us about is, you know, what are some of Georgia's strengths? What are their weaknesses? Where do we have opportunities? Um, he also talked about the importance of workforce in your community and what we're doing to, to move that forward. And that was actually one of Georgia's weaknesses was the K-12 education, um, along with about 46 other states. So we don't want to sit here and say Georgia's is the worst. We, there every, lots of states have the same problem. So um, and I know that's a governor, the governor's working towards that. Um, if he wins, the other one, whoever should win. But, um, those were some issues that we talked about, and workforce and the soft skills being huge, um, and how do you integrate that into the elementary school. Um, and he actually gave some really neat um, examples. One is called Lego League, and it is actually teaching these kids in schools with Legos. It's sponsored by Lego and some other um, companies. Another one is called um, First Tech, First Tech Students. And there was another one. But anyway, he gave some good examples that Iowa has been doing through their school system with um, the public-private partnerships. So, Terry will like that was Iowa. Um, so, we also talked on our motion. We had Jeff with Deloitte present, as well as Betty McIntosh with Cushman and Wakefield, talk about what's going on from the site consultants' role to projects and what's taking place and what challenges company, what companies are seeing. And, um, Georgia's doing really well, but it's mostly around the Atlanta area um, due to the density of the population. So that's what we talk about. But they still see that there's going to be a surge of activity coming up soon. So I talked about that. Also <coughs> met with um, Spencer Green with Cushman Wakefield. The organic milling building now is being marketed by Cushman Wakefield. 
So I met with him today in Atlanta to kind of walk through that process and see whatever we can do. What price did it go on? He didn't really give me a firm price, but it's around $7. Same no, it's a little cheaper. Mm -hmm. well, it's about what they could originally get one in nine. It's nice. I think what they come to terms is about $20 square foot. That's in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this group, Christian Waco, what they bring to the table is a huge interaction. And they bring a lot of international marketing. And that's a 